Do you know how complex an activity it is for a human being to walk at a certain latitude on a round planet which is spinning and which has magnetic forces working upon you all the time. It's an extremely complex process. You ask a child who is, let's say, one year of age, he knows how complex it is. But the moment you learn to walk, you assume that it's nothing, walking is nothing and you're sick of walking, you want to drive a car, you want to ride a motorcycle. But walking is such a complex process, not fourteen. A thousand different functions, your knees and your brains and the fluids in your body, all of them are doing all the time. If only you could conduct these things consciously, you would be doing a thousand things. Anyway you're doing it, but if you could conduct this consciously, you would do a thousand things at a time, isn't it? So I was only talking about different channels of mind, which you don't have to actually conduct, you just have to initiate and leave. It will go on. Why? Because you're drawn to it. If you're drawn to ten different things at the same time, mind is capable of creating ten different channels and keep it running. There are people in small towns in Tamil Nadu who are called Shatavadanis. That means they can do one hundred things at the same time. A complex mathematical problem, a sensation, a music, some raga, this, that, hundred things at the same time. Because that is how complex human mind is. This complexity you can use either to drive yourself crazy with unbridled thought and emotion or if you harness it, it can do things that nobody has imagined possible. It can do things in a miraculous way. You can manifest things in a phenomenal way if the necessary training goes. See, is it not very clear to you? If somebody is walking there, if you just look at them, you can make out whether they're physically fit or not. Body has been worked upon, you can see it or no, just by the walk. Similarly, whether the mind has been worked upon or not, whether your energies have been worked upon or not, is something that's visible. Most people may not see, but if you pay attention, you will see. Right now, the problem is, we gave you a super, super, super computer. The most sophisticated machine on this planet is this human mechanism. I am asking you, have you read the user's manual? When are you going to read it? On the last day? When I see this ridiculous stuff, people reading Gita when people are dying, I say, you're reading the user's manual on the last day, what's the point <laughs> If you buy a phone, should you read the user's manual in the first three days or after three years when you want to get rid of the phone? You must read it in the first three days. So I'm not asking you to read a scripture. Well, this is a living scripture. Should you not become competent to read the scripture, understand what is the nature of this, what is the full potential of it and explore this? Because this life is not about this or that. This life is about this. All the other things are only attendant things. This is the real thing, isn't it? So if this is the real thing, does this deserve some amount of attention? Some amount of attention means not standing in front of the mirror and attending to your skin endlessly. Should you not pay attention to every dimension of what this human being is made of? What makes this life tick? And how? If you understand what makes it tick, you can make it roar. If you make it roar, why fourteen things, you can do many more.